Hey there, I'm Artifacts and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to do something cinematic. We are going to talk about how to make Brahm sounds. These ones right here, the ones uh, that are the lighter colored tracks, those are the ones we're going to be looking into today. But I'm going to play you this entire thing. I kind of written this today and I think it sounds pretty cool. So this is what it sounds like. So here we are, welcome. Um, today we're gonna do this pretty interesting sound. So um, these are the ones that we're gonna be talking about today. It's kind of an interesting sound and it becomes more intense the longer this goes on. Right here, there's a synth that comes in. And together they make up this really big sound. And um, there's some pitch bends going on, and we're gonna we're gonna look into all of this. So let's get um let's get started with these. So these are actually built out of just a several different several different layers. It's not that complicated. It's just it's a lot of layering, pretty much. So um, the first thing I started off with, I started off with a tuba, and I'm playing a G note. For the most part, you can see I'm playing mostly G notes here, and then for one section, I'm going up to a G sharp just to create even more tension on the end there um, before it goes into the next section. So, this is where like the main percussion would come in. So, it kind of like raises the tension a little bit before that point. Um, and this is just a tuba. So, let me close that down a bit. This tuba is basically just the Sound Iron Brass Ensemble, the Symphony Essentials that, that comes with a contact or with complete, I think. Um, Sound Iron, um, the tuba essential, this one. And I'm using the mod wheel to control the dynamics here. So if I play this one, you should be able to see that. Now there's also a lot of reverb on here if I take the reverb off. It's just going to be a lot drier. Um, and that is then stacked with a trombone. Now the trombone is coming from the same library. It's also coming from the Sound Iron uh, Brass Ensemble library. And I've taken the trombone as well. Which gives it slightly of a more crispier sound. So with these two layered on top of each other... You get the base of the tuba and you get the more high raspier sound of the trombone, which works really well. Um, and then here, I think on the second one, yeah, on the second one I'm bending them up in pitch. So instead of getting this, we now get this. See on the end, they start bending up. That again raises the tension it, it all adds up to that atmosphere that we want to set we want to create this unsettling atmosphere with this kind of sound and that's what they what they're used for most of the times in film trailers as well um i then doubled that up again with a horn and the horn is not playing on all of the uh all of the hits of the brahm it only plays on like every second one so here we have it without the horns and then we get one with with the horns now in the horns they Basically, will only play the they will only play the Brahm notes that um, have a pitch bend on them. So the ones without a pitch bend don't get the horns here. I thought that was a little cool addition. Um, the horn sounds like this, by the way. 
That's again um, from the uh, Sound Iron Brass, Brass Ensemble Library. So that's the downwards going one. Um, if I turn the reverb back on, you're really going to hear what it does. It gives it a beautiful sound. So with the reverb, it just makes it so much better. Um, the reverb is Valhalla Room, by the way. Set to a preset called Basilica of the Sento Spiri something. Basilica of S Basilica of Sento Spirito. That's the preset I've used. I think I've changed. Yeah, I I did change the the decay time here to about six and a half seconds. Um, so those three together now create this. So there you can hear where the horns come in. And there it goes up to that G-sharp note, creating that even more tension right there. So, I then thought to myself, they start to sound pretty good, but they're not big enough yet. So, I took a synthesizer, and I just went for Serum, by the way, and I made a really quick patch. I made this patch, which is just a saw wave with six voices, running through a low-pass filter, and I'm controlling the low-pass filter cut of frequency with the mod wheel. Um, why did I do that? Well, because most of these contact libraries are also being controlled by the mod wheel, so now I could just simply take that MIDI clip and just copy it over to the synth track, and it would automatically just grab the same modulation for, uh, that was coming from the mod wheel, because I had already set that up on the tracks with the trombones and the horns and the tubas. So, I just had to shape it a little bit to make the modulation slightly different. Um, and again, it's running through the reverb as well. Um, it, the reverb is all on the synth track, by the way, so that's where everything is running through. And, um... That synth sounds like this. So you can hear it's literally just a saw wave with a bunch of voices. Um, there's nothing going on in the effects panel. And there's literally only one modulation source here. That's all it is. Um, only here, I'm actually playing two notes. So from this point right here, I start playing two notes. So that's where I start playing an octave. To all make it sound a little bit richer, so that even increases the tension, we get more frequency content there, which is a good thing. Um, that is then doubled up by this one, called Synth Wild, and this is a Serum preset, actually. It's a preset from the Synth category called Buzzsaw, and I changed it a little bit, because by default it has no filter set up. Um, so what I did is I set up a low-pass filter, and I again attached the mod wheel to the filter cutoff frequency. Um, now this patch is also running through that filter and that way I can open it up and create like uh, a feeling that it just that it opens up over time like this this patch by default is just like a sustained sound more like a lead sound um, and I wanted to have more like a pat like character um, so that it would work together with all the other sounds. So this layer sounds like this. In a way, pretty similar to the other one, except it's less detuned, um, and it just helps. It just adds up to uh, adds up to the final sound, um, especially because right here I'm alternating between octaves, so it gives it slightly different characters on each one of these Brahms. So now, with these synths as well, we get this. Here we get the double octave. And now the, the higher pitch synth comes in. But that one we haven't talked about yet. So, let's talk about that one. This one is again very similar. Um, I think... Yeah, it's very similar actually to the other one. Eight voices right here on oscillator A. Um, quite a bit of detuning. And only one voice on this one. Um, this one is brought down an octave, that's just to give it a bit more bass, I think. 
and I've then again done the same here with the low pass filter and I've added a really low saw wave in it somehow which is three octaves down so not sure why I did that but there's a little bit of tube distortion on this one um, and a little bit of chorus and when I play it it sounds like this Okay, so I added the sub oscillator. I added that really low saw because without it sounds like this. Here, how that is very clean. Um, like there's not really any rumble in the sound, and I kind of wanted to make it sound a bit dirtier. So I added that low sub, but because we are high passing it here with an EQ, we don't really hear the sub that much. It's only kind of giving it that little bit of a raspier sound. And that really helps to uh, make it all sound a bit heavier. Um, now with this combined, you get this first. So that's without the high synth. And now the synth comes in. And then we go to a higher pitch. And the other funny thing is here. Um, all these brahms on the second note every time it's it pitches down right uh, or or it pitches up the funny thing is with this higher pitch synth is that on the brahm notes where it doesn't do any pitch bends the higher synth is actually still pitching up so it's creating like a pitch difference right here between the higher pi higher pitch synth layer and all the other layers of the brahm so that creates a lot of dissonance and that creates a lot of tension. And on the second note of the Brahm, if we, if we remember correctly, all the Brahm sounds are bending up in pitch, but the higher pitch synth is now bending down in pitch. So on the end of this Brahm note, we get a, a much bigger pitch difference, which in, again increases the amount of tension. So that's why and how you can build this tension here. Um, and that's pretty much all, all there's to it, to the actual Brahm sound itself. Now, of course, without all the other sounds, it, it still sounds just like, you know, a Brahm. It, it, sound, it sounds just like that. It, 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 it really shines when you add all the other layers, like the rising sounds, um, some atmospheric stuff in the background, have a bunch of percussion, uh, maybe a bass line, like a pulsing bass line that I have right here. You know, all these, these little effects help to make them sound even better. But at the core of it, this is what a Brahm sound is. So there you have it. Now, this is actually a, a prelude to tomorrow's live stream because tomorrow we are going to talk about a contact instrument that I've been given by a company and um, they've asked me if I wanted to do a video about it and I'm actually going to do a live stream tomorrow where I'm going to try and make something similar to this um, live on stream and we're gonna use that plugin quite a bit or that contact library quite a bit um, it actually does the same thing as what I've done here but supposedly it's gonna be making it a lot easier for me so I'm interested to try it out so that's it for this tutorial guys I hope you learned something I like doing these other things I like doing these cinematic tutorial videos so maybe just maybe I'm gonna do a lot more cinematic stuff soon um, cinematic music is something I love to make next to drum and bass and uh, I think I could do some stuff here so um, if you guys want to see more of these videos then please let me know um, maybe you want to see how I did all these percussive things or how I did some of the other things in this in this particular project feel free to let me know in the comments what you want to learn next because I'm always looking for new video ideas and you guys can help me with that. Now, before we end the video, I'm going to play this entire thing one more time during the outro, but before we do that, if you want to be a member of my Discord community, then check the invite link below this video. There you can find tips for music production, you can talk with others about the latest plugins, about music production techniques, and it, you can basically just ask your questions and get better at music production. You can share your music and get feedback from other members and help other members get feedback. Basically, we help each other out getting better at music production, and that is what it's for. So if you want to be a member of that, then check out that link in the description. 
If you want to get some sample packs or preset packs, link is in the description as well. Links to the Black Octopus Sound website where you can find all my sample packs and preset packs. And of course, there's also a donation link in the description. If you want to help this channel out, help me out supporting this channel, then feel free to make a donation. Everything is highly appreciated. Tomorrow's live stream is also going to be about the cinematic thing. Like I said, we're going to make some trailer music or something like that with a plugin, a contact library that is going to be pretty fun. So tomorrow's live stream is going to be at 8 p.m. Central European time. So if you are looking for something like that, then tune in tomorrow because I'm pretty hyped up for this one. I'm, I, I like this kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's play this one and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.